Welcome to my very first 4K vlog. Well, actually, at the moment you are watching upsampled 2K video from my GoPro because it is too old and it doesn't have 4K. But I will be showing you some real 4K footage later on in this vlog. Those who watch my vlog regularly may know that a couple of weeks ago I went to Holland to shoot a 4K video on the X-T2 for a guy named Edward. Uh, Edward is a hunter and fisherman who needed some uh, videos for his website and well I needed the practice and to see if I wanted to get deeper into this uh, video thing. The video is finished now, I will show you uh, the video in a minute. Um, it was all shot in 4K and I've exported it, actually I'm exporting it right now from Premiere Pro to the standard YouTube 4K video uh, preset. Apart from editing and exporting I have done nothing to the images so there's no color grading, this is all in camera. Um, the one thing I've added is subtitles because the video is in Dutch uh, and I wanted to make sure that those of you who want to follow what's going on and not just look at the images know what it is all about. There is some graphic content although it is very uh, moderate uh, but if you are offended by um, that uh, geese then this is probably not the video to watch and you may just um, skip like 10 minutes and go to the end because after showing the finished video I will uh, tell you a bit more about the tools that I use, the accessories that I use and I will tell you what settings I use so stay tuned uh, here is the video of Edward Nou, we zijn wel lekker vroeg. Nog geen gans te bespeuren. Ik ga nog even gauw twee groene takken halen. Hey mensen, Edward jagen en vissen. Kijk even op het internet, dan weet je het. En ik zit hier vanmorgen om de ganzengaten te bestrijden. Ik heb lekker mijn hondjes bij me. Het is mooi weer, het is echt een beetje zomer. De gaan ze niet helemaal top, maar uh, de schade moet bestreden worden. We zitten hier in een grasland. En die gaan ze die vertrappen, die verscheiden alles. Zodat die boer niet meer kan maaien, niet meer kan rommelen. En dan moet de jager komen om het op te ruimen. En daar zijn we vandaag mee bezig. Nou, het begin is er. Het is een idee bij mij om op de dijk te gaan zitten, dan kan je eigenlijk beter weghouden. Maar weet je, daar vallen ze niet, ze vuren hier. En dan vallen ze verdomme op de dijk. Te hoog. Oh, deze draaien. Oeh. Oeh. Twee Canada's. Kom, 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 kom. Kom, 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 kom. Nou, wat gebeuren? Dat is één, dat is twee. Daar is dood hoor. Dat spartelen, dat zijn stuiptrekkingen. Ik heb het er net over en nou gebeurt het. Er komen er nog veel meer. We gaan gauw zitten, kom op. 
Die gaan ze komen wel. Dit waren de eerste. Canada's. Grote, dikke bouten. Die ganzen die zijn getraind. Hè. In heel Nederland wordt erop gejaagd. Hè. En iedereen jaagt met lokkers. En, 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 en ze zijn gewoon soms echt moeilijk aan de veren te komen. Ik zit hier tegenover de nieuwbouw, dus ik wil het ook zo netjes mogelijk doen. Ja, dat wil ik altijd. Maar hier heb je natuurlijk pottenkijkers. Maar het hoort erbij. Pippi, af! Ga af! Nooit gezien. Ja, maar je moet allemaal dingen tegelijk doen. Op je jonge hond letten. Op die ganzen letten. Een kans verprutst. Mijn bek was te groot naar die puppy. Ik denk, ik zal hem eventjes op zijn plek douwen. En die ganzen hoorden me en ze waren weg. Allemaal ganzen. Nou, die ga ik benaderen. Komen er nog meer? Ze streken buiten schot, je kon er niet op schieten. Die gaan een rondje draaien en zakken. Ze draaien nu. Appot. Appot. Brave kereltjes. Lekker eentje jongens. Super. Kom. Hier. Ja, dat heb je met een puppy. Hij moet alles nog leren. Puppy. Af. Brandjes. Oh, brandjes. Ik wil brandjes, kom. Brandjes zijn de lekkerste. Maar uh, die brandjes denken, we hebben er geen zin in. Ze gaan door. Oh, wat een mooi wild allemaal. Wat een wild, wat een wild, hè. Het is niet te geloven, wat een wild. Super. Oh, ik dacht even dat het de verkeerde was. Ik denk, ik doe het niet. Maar het was toch een goeie. Je zit hier, je schiet twee ganzen en een eind, maar wat een wild hebben we gezien. Honderden ganzen. Het is een overvloed. En ook een overvloed aan allerlei rotregeltjes en papierwinkels. En verplichtingen en vergunningen. Het jaagt in drie verschillende provincies. En in drie provincies moet je verschillende danspassies uithalen. En, en anders hangen ze je op. Ze maken je af als je... Eén fluit in de verkeerde provincie bij je hebt, ben je ridder te voet, mag je naar huis en nooit meer terugkomen. Om een stom fluitje, om een gering foutje, om 100 meter verschil. Het gaat om 100 meter. Daar aan de andere kant is Utrecht en ik zit hier in Noord-Holland. 100 meter. Canada zijn hele geluid. Ja, daar heb ik geen fluit voor, dat doe ik met mijn stem, hè. Maar ik ben bang dat ze ingestreken zijn aan de andere kant van de mais. Want ik zie ze niet meer. Die Canada's, dat zijn van die lekkere grote ganzen. Die schiet ik graag. Niet voor op het bord, maar voor in de worst. Het maakt lekker veel kilo's. Supergoed vlees om worst van te maken. Maar kilo's. Ze trekken aan de andere kant van de bomen aan en ze trekken zich niets van ons aan. Helemaal niets. Nee, ze hebben iets in gedachten en ze laten zich niet van de wijs brengen. Gaat hem niet worden, jongen. Het is te mooi weer. We hebben geen wind. Als je wind hebt, komen ze lager bij de grond. Want lager bij de grond waait het minder hard dan daarboven. Als je geen wind hebt, kunnen ze alle kanten op kijken en sturen. 
Het is te mooi weer, heerlijk, mooi weer. Maar niet voor op de ganzen te jagen. Drie heb ik er. Stuiptrekking hoor, niks aan de hand. Die ene, die had ik natuurlijk, boem. Maar toen zag ik dat die andere twee precies parallel gingen vliegen. Ik denk, wachten, wachten, wachten. Boem, toen had ik het twee tegelijk. Het gebeurt je. Zo heb je niks, zo heb je alles. Dat is de jacht. In de jacht is niet alles gelijk dood. Laten we eerlijk zijn. Maar dan dient een snelle, vlotte handbeweging daar een snel einde aan te maken. Bij een leeuw en een tijger is het ook wel eens een keer mis, een prooi. En ook wel eens niet gelijk dood. En dan moeten ze ermee uh, knokken. I hope you enjoyed that video. Now let me tell you a bit about how I made it, which tools I used, um, the settings I used, things like that. So first of all, the camera of choice was my Fujifilm X-T2. Um, Fujifilm has never been really good at the video department until now, because I think the images uh, or the footage looks amazing. Um, and then I've only recorded straight to the card I haven't used their uh, F-Log or whatever it's called, uncompressed out uh, video. So I just used this. And I've been using my uh, 1655 lens. Um, it is not a stabilized lens and the camera doesn't have a stabilized sensor uh, like some other mirrorless options. Um, I do have an 1855 which is image stabilized, but I really wanted to get, first of all, the image quality of this lens which is just a bit better I also like the handling better and I wanted to have some movement in my images I wanted to uh, be a bit rough uh, not too perfectly smooth because um, there's been a bit of overkill about all the butter smooth gimbal kind of images so um, I think it fits better with my photography style too if there's some movement uh, in those images uh, but not too much to make it like disturbingly shaky so I try to get that uh, thing going most of the time I found out that the camera is pretty easy to use um, you just turn this uh, top lever to video and you are in video mode the shutter button uh, starts and stops the video recording um, so that works quite easily um, I shot at 24p in 4K, so um, in order to get like a, a nice image quality, a nice look to the images, a cinematic look to the images, I shot at 1 50th of a second. Um, the general rule is to shoot at double of the amount of frames you shoot a second, so I'm shooting 24p, so I should have shot at 48, uh, 1 48th of a second which unfortunately is not possible of course um, so I used the closest 150 and it looked uh, pretty good to me uh, most of the time so I shot this at 160 of a second f4 um, and I shot uh, manual ISO so for the start I shot at really high ISO 6400 um, but as soon as the sun came up I shot at ISO 200 uh, but even at the higher ISOs, I think the image quality still holds together, although it gets a bit grainy, but it still holds together. Also this lens, I love this lens a lot. What you have to keep in mind is that there is a little crop factor. Um, it's, I don't know, about 1.17 or something um, on the 4K. If you shoot HD, you get the, like, the full range. If it's 4K, the image is tiny, a tiny bit cropped. Um, and I was shooting at close quarters in the height most of the time so that 16 millimeter um, I used that quite a lot because uh, I couldn't back uh, back away more so that came in handy most of the time so what else did I use um, I did use the let me build up the rig the way I did so I uh, used the 
battery booster grip which is like a Fuji's battery grip um, it's not just extra batteries and you need extra batteries if you shoot video on this camera I this thing holds like two extra batteries they're not in it now but it holds them so you have a total of three batteries in your camera and to me that was about enough to shoot for half a day um, the I'm generally not too fond of battery grips because they make your camera just bigger but in this case it makes sense uh, for the extra extra battery life you also get a longer recording time if you use the battery booster grip um, I think you get half an hour instead of 15 minutes something like that um, and you also get your headphones jacket it's on the booster grip I would have liked it more on the body so I can use it with or without the grip as I please uh, but I wanted to monitor the audio a bit so I just used some headphones uh, and plugged it in here um, I basically did it just for testing and then I went without the headphones on top of the camera for uh, the sound I used a Rode Video Mic, Video Mic Pro um, this thing is um, kind of it can move within a, a kind of frame um, the frame is made by Rycote uh, but it is an integral part of the microphone I just got this microphone actually because I I didn't have a good shotgun microphone anymore uh, but I found it to be very very good um, I put a what is called a dead cat on top of it which is this hairy thing I call this hairy mic um, but it takes care of uh, wind noise, not all the wind noise, but at least when there's a bit of wind. Um, the air inside this thing um, doesn't move and that's what basically prevents the wind noise from being too audible. So that goes just into the hot shoe of the camera. I haven't been a fan of on-camera microphones when I used to be in my video days that was pretty much not done but I found out that the sound is actually quite good so I'm not gonna bother about that you may want to use other options for high-end uh, TV work or um, cinema stuff but I think it is quite good actually so and this basically plugs in to the three and a half inch uh, connector on the side of the camera which is an upgrade from the XT1 which had only a two and a half um, a mini jack plug which is not very good because it's not industry standard this one is um, so I figured this setup kind of works it's uh, pretty easy to hold pretty easy to take with you and it really helped me pick that last thing I put on the camera itself is this this is a Tiffin variable ND filter so what this thing does is it uh, blocks light again so um, the thing with this filter is that um, if you want to be shooting um, at 1 50th of a second even at ISO 200 um, you're gonna get a lot of light on a sunny day uh, and you will be forced to shoot at f16 or f22 and even then that might be still too much light and I wanted to shoot with a shallow depth of field for a more cinematic look um, so this basically allows you to uh, control that amount of light that comes in and most of the video was shot with the same settings on the camera and I just tweaked the filter a bit to get the right amount of light coming in and this stops down a lot there's very little artifacts that I can see I can see very little uh, coloration in the images so um, that seems to be like a, a good match the last thing I used is this this is a Vanguard uh, video monopod what it does is it holds your camera of course like a, any normal uh, monopod would do but it has little legs that flip out like this and they make your shot a lot more stable um, you can loosen the lower part up so the monopod swivels a bit um, 
or you can tighten it so it's really almost as solid as a bad tripod. Uh, but it is a big improvement and I love working with it. Um, it also has a video head on top so I could do some smooth uh, pans and tilts. Um, so this thing really works. There are other monopods on the market. I just happen to have a contact that uh, could borrow me this one. Um, at Photokina last week I've been looking at the um, the ones from Manfrotto which is our, our the industry standard um, but I've also been looking at what Sirui uh, has when it comes to video monopods and that seems to be even better so maybe one day I will replace this one uh, with probably the Sirui monopod um, it has a quick release plate so um, can easily get the camera on and off. I didn't use it that much on this um, on this thing uh, because I just didn't have the space, but it came in handy for a couple of shots. Camera settings. Well, I've been using this camera at these settings. Hang on, not these settings. These settings, um, I used um, a daylight white balance. I use the classic chrome film simulation with minus two on the highlights and minus two on the shadows. And that seems to give me a very pleasing flat file. Um, I was actually thinking about grading the video, uh, but I have not much experience with it. And um, actually whatever I tried, the original footage looked just better. I can imagine working um, on bigger projects where there's a budget for um, grading and the time you put into uh, grading it will be fine but for the smaller uh, video assignments uh, little documentaries personal things um, I figure with the uh, film simulations and the settings you can get a long way um, towards getting a nice filmic look out of these images so uh, it's definitely something that I will be experimenting with a bit more when it comes to audio, um, a lot of people um, advise to put the, the Rode VideoMic Pro, there's a switch, minus 10, 0 or plus 20 dB. Uh, a lot of people uh, put it on plus 20 for their cameras and then put the audio gain or the volume control um, on their cameras all the way down because can cameras generally don't have good uh, microphone preamps um, and what's in here does a better job than most cameras does but I found that um, even at the lowest setting um, the X-T2 is still a bit too loud if I put it on plus 20 dB so most of the time I put it at zero and put the um, volume control let me show you put the mic level adjustment that's what it's called put it around 8 which seems to be a pretty good um, thing to still capture um, quality audio without uh, peaking uh, the audio so um, around 8 worked for me on this project but of course that depends entirely on the situation that you might be in as for editing I used uh, Premiere Pro uh, CC, latest version, seems to edit it quite well on my iMac, although uh, even though I have 16 um, gigs of RAM, 4K really takes a lot of your machine, machine, definitely if you are trying to layer and put things on top. I also put uh, black bars on the top and the bottom to get the CinemaScope uh, horizontal panoramic view, because I like that. Uh, it doesn't do anything else actually. I'm very much aware that this video is far from perfect. Uh, there's a lot that I would do different if I had to do it right now. Um, there's a lot to learn about this new technology. This um, working with 4K is it's so demanding because every little detail that is wrong, well, you see it in 4K. Um, also things about stabilization, the way I hold the, uh, the camera, things like that. Um, I need some practice, um, but I think I'm on the right 
way to create something that I like that is in the same style as my photography. Um, the main thing that I did wrong here was that I didn't shoot enough B-roll. So B-roll is all the other footage um, that's not absolutely essential for a um, video but that you can use in editing to make smooth transitions. There's a couple of transitions in this video that I'm not happy with uh, but hey, um, you have to learn somehow and I was very limited in my movement but still I should have shot a lot more b-roll and in my next experiment I'm definitely going to make sure I shoot more b-roll. And that's the end of this episode of the vlog. Bye bye.